As Andy said, it, it's Dean Peterson, Russell Benz, his crew, um, Cal Larson, Corey Ingram that, that do all the hard work out here. And I mean, I just have to say, it, this place looks awesome. I'm really glad, Andy, that you indicated that those weeds were supposed to be back there. I got a little nervous about that when I came. <laughs> So um, we have continued here the work that has been done um, for years. I guess we we I think we've been out here for maybe ten years or so. Um, NDSU potato pathology, and so I'm just continuing that work. What you see behind me are um, really these three blocks of of. Uh, trials that are early blight foliar fungicides uh, foliar fungicides for brown spot as well as for black dot and um, I think the guys told me this year that we have a hunt over 140 foliar treatments and they're not impressed by that at all so hopefully next year we're gonna have fewer than that and really you know the crux of all of this is looking at how we can better control these foliar diseases and um, it, Dean's passing out a handout there. I don't have a handout, or Dean and the guys are. I don't have necessarily a handout of these trials. Um, we're having a little bit of a hard time getting disease growing. That hot and dry has, has put us back a little bit, but we're hoping to get some good disease data out of here now that it's cooled off a little bit. And a lot of these treatments are things that are up and coming still. Uh, companies just want us to, you know, kind of keep that on the down low a little bit. But it's really important for us to be able to look at these compounds for you under your growing conditions so that when they are released, we can say, yeah, you know what, we looked at that. Here's what we saw. Here are, here's what the data say. And um, here's what we can recommend. And so really find that to be a very important part of, of what we do. And so we will, with the support of the growers, with the support of the, the NPPGA, we will continue to, um, to do these sorts of trials to really be able to make those recommendations for you. Um, as far as her, our recommendations are concerned, they really haven't changed over the last couple of years. We're still looking at fungicide resistance in um, the early blight pathogens and the brown spot pathogens and a little bit in even into the black dot um, pathogen. And so that, um, it, you know, we can again kind of keep ahead of the game what you're seeing in your fields, what you need to be spraying, what's going to be um, efficacious for you. And so uh, one of the uh, somewhat new projects, and, and this is on the handout there, somewhat new project that we have going is uh, looking at brown spot a little more closely. Over the years, uh, Neil and his group looked at early blight very closely, and for years and years and years we did that work. But probably about, starting maybe about 20 years ago, when I was working in Neil's lab and, and get, working on my degrees, um, he, we would keep, you know, look at this brown spot. We got brown spot, can you, can you isolate the pathogen? Can we keep that? He kept telling me that year after year after year. And you know how he gets, like you all knew him. Like, you know, year after year after year, same story. And I'm like, what are we going to do with these? Well, a, a probably a couple years before he retired, he started working on brown spot. So the beauty of this is at all of those isolates, all of those pathogens that we collected, I started collecting 20 years ago, we're now doing research on, and that's what's in your handout. So we come full circle around. The importance of it is we know a lot about the early blight pathogen. We don't know a lot about the brown spot pathogens. What we do have learned in the last handful of years is that some work out of the Pacific Northwest indicates that we have not just one fungus that causes that disease, but at least three, maybe four. And so we started looking back at, I, I said, you know, we have, we have all these isolates that we've been putting in the freezer for 20 years. We started looking back, and what we thought was one pathogen 20 years ago was really three at that time. And it's, it's today's technology that can tell us that we actually have three different um, pathogens that are causing the disease. It's important because we, what we don't know right now, and we're still, we're, we're kind of looking at, kind of parceling this out, is, uh, is one of these fungi more aggressive than the others? So we know we have three in, in North Dakota. Um, we, the the um, most common one is actually decreasing in prevalence, and, and you can see that in those graphs on that paper there. 
and some of the others are starting to increase. Well, what does that mean? Maybe nothing. It might mean absolutely nothing to you in your fields, but we don't really know that. We need to look at the aggressiveness. Why are these other species increasing and, and the main species, if you will, decreasing? Is it, are they more or less susceptible to certain fungicides? We don't know. Okay, we started to look at that. One of Neil's graduate students started to look at that, and we're continuing that work. And so that's really kind of the crux of that, of that um, work on brown spot, to really kind of figure out why, why is it changing a little bit, and how is that going to affect all of you. Um, and, and if you have any questions on that, or anything else for that matter, please, please let me know. I talked this morning about soil-borne um, pathogens. Uh, uh, let's back up a little bit. So um, uh, Gary talked, and I don't think he's going to speak this afternoon, but kind of what's happening. What have we been seeing out in, in, as far as the foliar pathogens are concerned? We, you know, we, of course, we don't have any late blight here. As Gary said this morning, they have found some late blight a little bit in Wisconsin, a little bit in Maine, and I believe a little bit in Ontario. And that's all the reports that I've heard of. You know, with this kind of weather um, that we were having, of course, we're not going to see any late blight here. Um, I think early blight even as well due to the heat and the dry has not been um, as prevalent as we have seen in previous years. Um, verticillium wilt is really starting to kick in and, uh, and that stress that those plants were under early um, and really mid-season is really starting to show up. Uh, a lot of reports of, of, of uh, fields going down early and, and uh, that sort of thing. So I think the verticillium wilt is really rearing its ugly head. Um, we have, uh, for, I have for many years worked on verticillium wilt, and we continue to do that. Um, some of the most exciting things we have going uh, forward with verticillium wilt are our, our work with um, Susie Thompson and, and Laura Shannon on looking at really digging into um, the resistance to verticillium wilt and really, really getting a much better understanding of what's happening there. And uh, the three of us have a couple new projects going forward, and I'm super excited about that. Uh, I think that, you know, we make, a, we make a good team. We all have some varying things to offer and uh, super excited about that relationship going forward and, and uh, starting to garner some more information from you. And uh, that project is funded by the North Dakota Specialty Crop Block Grants. Um, yeah, I talked about some other soil-borne things this morning that I won't, I won't get into this afternoon, but we're working on uh, projects on common scab and uh, several other pathogens as well. So I'd be happy to... Um, chat with everybody. I would be um, happy. We are ha always happy to get samples. Uh, find out what's happening in your fields uh, and what we can do for you, what, what you're seeing. Um, that information is, is extremely helpful to us in framing, framing our research going forward. So again, I thank everybody for being here today. I thank the, the Northern Plains potato growers, um, all, everybody that put all of their effort into this, uh, this wonderful field site and uh, can answer any questions that you have. Yeah, so the question is, should you still be concerned about late blight? So it gets cool and it gets wet and you still have a canopy, should you be concerned about late blight? And yes, because you still can get tuber blight. So you're not going to necessarily get the damage from defoliation of the foliar late blight, but as those uh, as that uh, sporulation occurs on the foliage and it that rains and it washes off into the soil and then you can get tuber infection from there. So yeah, absolutely. Like you're not going to necessarily save the little bit of foliage you have left, but you would um, you would save the tubers. You know, it's pretty still kind of, you know, relatively unlikely, I think, at this point, but we always need to, to be vigilant. Um, Gary, are you out there, and do you have anything to add to our pathology report? Okay, yeah, that's a good... Sure, that's a good point. I did actually, there are some growers having some difficulties with it under irrigation because the heat, so he, Gary was uh, talking about vine rot, so pectobacterium, dickia, et cetera, um, and in, in under drier conditions typically wouldn't, wouldn't see that, but if you're trying to irrigate to keep, to keep that moisture up, um, the heat would really, drive, would really drive that vine rot. So there are some areas that's a decent amount of vine rot from my understanding. Mm -hmm.